Hi, welcome to Calypso Tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll see how to display and edit a database record. Like so many other features in Calypso, there is an easy way to create the interface to display and edit a database record. All we have to do is drag and drop the database table from the project tree to the background of the NIN16 form. The same wizard we've seen before comes up and we select the last option. Create a form based on a database table with SQL statements. Let's change the name of our form to form product. Press done. After a few seconds, we can see that Calypso creates the form we need. Let's take some time to analyze it. It's built up mainly with labels and input boxes, one per each column. To understand how Calypso fetches a record and displays it, we need to go to the open form event. So, double click on the form, actions. Here's a SQL statement who selects all the columns, specifying the target of each one. So, we select column code of the table products into input code, column name of the table products into input name and so on. The problem is, Calypso hasn't defined anywhere, so we won't display any specific record because he doesn't know which record we want to display. Therefore, we need to find a way to tell him. Let's close all of this. So, we want to open this new form displaying the record, which will be selected by the user on this table. Let's start by opening the form when the user selects a record. Double click on the table. Actions and either click or double click, let's create our show form and we want to show the form product we've just created. Save and save. Let's test the application to see how it goes. So, products, let's click for instance carrots. As expected, the form opens but displays the first record from products table regardless of the selected item, because there's nowhere in the SQL statement we've just seen. The first thing we need is to find which product code is selected on the table. We can do that with the table get column value action. Let's double click, actions, and before the show form, let's do a table get column value. Let's store the value in the temporary variable zero, which we can immediately rename to product code, save, and now to pass this value to the new form, we are going to use the already created show form action. Let's look at the advanced options of this action. As you can see, we can specify values for the local variables we are about to open. To make it clearer, let's save all the changes we've made and Rename the first local variable in the form we want to open. Let's rename local variable 0. Let's call in product code. Now, if we go back to the table, actions, if we check out show form action again, so we can set its content to the content of the temporary variable product code. The only thing left is to specify our local variable in the select in the filter we need. So, back to the form which displays the record. Into select. Now we can set where product code equals the value of local variable product code. Ready to test. Products. And let's do the same test. Select carrots. And as you can see, now it displays the record we want. What about saving data? Let's go back to the designer. Our Calypso generated form is also ready to save the changes the user makes to the record. Let's see how. When he opens the save button actions, we can see that it's not simple update being executed. Calypso starts by checking if the record exists and then decides to make an update or an insert. This can be helpful, but let's focus on making the update for now. I'm going to comment all the necessary actions. A commented action is one that is not executed. 
To finish our example, I'm going to disable the product code input box by specifying that it's read only. Let's save and test. Products, carrots, and I'm going to change the name of this product and press save. As you can see, the table isn't refreshed. This doesn't mean that the save wasn't performed. We simply don't see it. If we force the table to refresh by selecting something, we can see that the update was made. So, the problem we face now is that although our form saves the data, we still need to refresh the table control. The question is when. Back to the designer. We cannot call actions in one form or refer to another because Calypso forms are modal. This means that you can open as many instances as you wish. So, it's not possible to refresh the table from this form, but you need to know that one action is only executed when the proceeding ends. This means that if we check out the actions on the table, if we refresh the table after the show form, it will only be executed when the show form ends and since show form takes control over the application, it only ends when it closes. Our first thought would be to create a refresh control action, but that would be duplicating what we already have in the set selection event of the combo. The correct way is to ask Calypso to rerun the selection change. To do it so, we call the execute event action to trigger the refresh, just like before. So, we want to execute the action selection change event of the combo family right after the show form. So, the refresh will occur when the show form ends. Save. Let's try it. Products, carrots. Let's change this name and save. Now, everything works as expected. There's at least one thing that can be optimized in our project. Notice what happens when you don't edit any record and simply press exit. As you can see, the refresh happens even when we don't save the record. We can optimize this by telling the calling form if a save was done or not. Back to the designer. If we check out the exit button, it's easy to see that it simply closes the form. Now look at the save button. Calypso closes the form, but advanced options are enabled and the value 1 is returned to the calling form. That means we can capture this value in the show form. In our table, where we open the form, we've already specified values to the local variables of the form we're about to open, and it's also possible to specify targets for the returned values. Let's add temporary variable 1 as target, but first we rename it to refresh. This means that after show form, we can evaluate the variable, and we know that if it equals 1, the user press the save button and we should refresh. So we want if tbar refresh equals 1, do the execute event. Save and test. Products, carrots, some random changes. Save, it refreshes. Click exit and everything stays the same. So, now we only refresh the table if there was a save. We have successfully created a form to edit a record. How can we take advantage of the already built form and use it also to input new records? The interface is already built, so we just need to adjust the behavior. Why not take advantage of the local variable in product code? We can assume that if it's not filled, the form shouldn't load any record. Let's do it. If local variable in product code equals nothing, do nothing. Otherwise, do the select. Next step, how shall we give the user the ability to define if wants to create or edit a record? We'll create a pop-up menu. When the user clicks table, we'll show a pop-up menu with options new and edit.
As you can see, Calypso automatically creates actions to figure out which option was selected by the user. To do it so, he uses the pop-up keyword, which holds the index of the selected option. So, you move this to option 2 and copy paste show form and refresh to option 1. Let's remove the specification of the product code, save and test. Select option edit, everything works as before. Change the product name and save. Now let's try the new option and the form opens empty. All we need to do now is managing the save, which for now is only updating existing records. You might remember that Calypso was already managing the insert or update of the record. We've commented those actions and left only the update. I'm going to copy the same validation we do in the opening of the form. You can see that we can do alternate selection, holding control and click. Copy. Now we paste. OK. Time to rearrange and uncomment our actions. Let's read our script. If we are entering a new product, we check if it exists. If it does, let's give a message to the user. So, let's expand the update and move it to the else. All the rest, move it to the if and uncomment. Shorted to one comment is exactly the same as to comment. Control B. Again, if we are entering a new product, we check if already exists. If it does, let's give a message to the user. Message box. Product already exists. And we cancel the executions. If the product doesn't exist, we insert it on the database. If we are re-editing a product, we simply update, just like before. You might be wondering how does Calypso check if the product exists. Calypso is using the lookup function, which we can edit by placing the cursor above the function's name and pressing F2. The same shortcut to access actions. This function returns true if the record exists and false otherwise. As you can see, it checks the existence of records on the table products that verify the condition of the column code being equal to the value on the input code. And finally, when the form opens, if we are entering a new product, we'll change the state of the input code, so the user can specify the product code he wants to create. Save and test. Let's start by checking if the edit still works as before, since we've altered the save button. Random stuff, save, working. And now, new. Let me specify a code that already exists. Let's call it demo. Save, product already exists. Change and save and everything is working as expected. Our product has been created successfully. To finish our form, the input box, input family, should be replaced by a combo box. Let's go back to the designer and start by deleting the input family. Now, let's copy paste the combo already used before in the other form. We need to be careful when copy pasting between forms because all the actions come along with control. In our case, Calypso tells us that this control table products doesn't exist, at least on the current form. Since we don't need these actions, we can simply delete them. Another thing we don't need is the custom option we had, so we can simply specify the option no. We now need to position the combo in its right place, 
you can do that using Calypso's alignment feature. We start by selecting the control we want the combo to be aligned with. Then we select the alignment type, in this case choose vertical center to be at the same height as the label. Then we select another input and the combo family and make it the same size. And finally we align it to the right. Ok, we now need to refresh the combo to fill it with all the families, so the user can select one of them. We want to do it regardless of the mode we are opening the form, so it doesn't matter if we are using the form to enter a new product or editing an existing one. We always want the combo to be filled with all the families, so we've deleted the control and replaced it by another. What about the actions that were using the deleted control? Let's search for it. Press Ctrl F. We are going to search for IPT family. I'll search only in the current form. Search. There you go. Calypso lists all actions referring to IPT family. We can now double click them to access directly where they are being used. Notice that Calypso highlights the occurrences of the search value and even displays the number of hits. Let's switch to combo, save, do the same thing here. And here we can search again to make sure nothing was left. As you can see, it doesn't exist any reference to our input family now. So let's test it again. To make sure that it's working, let's select a family. Beverages, let's edit Pepsi, and as you can see, it has beverages in the combo selected. If we select beef ribs, we see the meat family. And of course, all families are here. At any moment, we can switch the family. When you try to add a new product, all the families are there, but none is selected. Congratulations, you've concluded the tutorial about editing data. See you on the next one.